Diana Berkovitz owes Columbia University a lot. She got a good education, made important professional contacts, and ran up a student loan debt there and at Ithaca College that will keep her in hock for at least 20 years. What I realize now is when I was 18, I had no concept of what it would mean to go to a school that costs more and what I would end up paying when I graduated. Her $80,000 in loans from her undergraduate and graduate school days are on the high end of the red ink, but student loan debt in this country is now greater than credit card debt. Casey Rasmussen is a senior at the University of Illinois who is afraid to even calculate what she owes. Will it force you to make certain life choices that if you didn't carry around debt like that that you wouldn't have to make? Probably. Probably going to have to work a job that I don't necessarily want to. And that's not all. It can affect a lot of choices like when to buy a home or whether to buy a home, getting married, having kids, saving for retirement, and saving for their own kids' education. There's no question that many students are racking up large amounts of debt, but many economists call that good debt. They liken it to a smart investment. You expect that it will pay off over many years. And borrowing money to go to college is like borrowing money to start a business. Sandy Baum is an education policy analyst. You're going to have a much higher lifetime income if you borrow and go to school and repay those loans than if you stop your education after high school. The numbers don't lie. In 2008, the median earnings of a bachelor's degree recipient were almost $22,000 more per year than a high school graduate. And lifetime, college grads earned 65% more than high school grads. So yes, the debt can be imposing, but remember, Barack and Michelle Obama were once $120,000 in debt from student loans, and they did pretty well. Dean Reynolds, CBS News, Chicago.